Hey y'all, Tiana here. So today I decided to kind of do a another tips video. <laughs> um, I do find these very helpful, so I keep doing them. Hopefully I like them. But I wanted to do kind of a how my partner can help post labor and delivery type of video. Um, because I noticed that a lot of people talk about what their partner can do while in labor or while pregnant. But nobody really focuses on what your partner can help with once you all go home with baby so today i wanted to focus on that i do want to preface this video by stating um andre and i have lived together since uh we've lived together for four years now so i do want to preface my statement with that my statements with that um so he has always been in the house with me pregnant, pre-pregnant, post-pregnant, whatever. So I do want to say that. Um, and before people start with the, well, my man's too busy, my man's too whatever, I do want to also point out, um, while I was pregnant and once I gave birth, Andre was a full-time student, worked multiple jobs, and ran his own business. I do want to make sure I put that out there because I don't want anybody to feel like their man has an excuse as to why they're not doing something. And then we're going to start with my list in my handy dandy notebook because I love this notebook. Anyways, so my first tip, this is uh, specific to my after effects of giving birth, but my biggest tip or the thing that Andre did for me personally that I felt like was like the biggest, oh wow, thank you so much, was helping me use the bathroom. I don't know if everybody's delivery is the same. Like I said, well, I know everybody's delivery is not the same, but I don't know if everybody goes through this. I know everybody bleeds after they have a baby, however they have that baby. But um, for me personally, it was really, really hard for me to use the bathroom. Like, to do number one. I'm not even talking about number two. Because I was bleeding so much. So, it might be TMI, but whatever. I couldn't bend down to clean up after myself. Like, I could wipe myself. But, I mean, like, I was, like, leaving trails <laughs> everywhere I went. <laughs> and so, we were in the hospital that first night. And then even that the first few days of us at home when it was happening, Andre would constantly go, he was like, is everything okay? And if I would say no, he would go to the bathroom, or he wouldn't say everything, or he'd say like, you good? Like he would ask me if I'm all right or whatever. And if I said no, he would go to the bathroom without being asked and clean up the bathroom behind me. So I do think like stuff like that is important, whether it's like helping you get in and out of the shower, if you had like a C-section or whatever, whatever the case may be, helping you in the bathroom, I feel like that's a big one. Like that, that should be a the automatic, I'm gonna do that for you. So that's my first thing that I wrote down on my list. Um, and I do think that that is the most important thing because everything else that I have on my list, for the most part is specific to baby, but this is just specific to you as their partner they should have some type of tender care with you in regards to you just had my baby not necessarily good as nasty so i did make sure i want i wanted to make sure i put that the next thing i have on my list is feedings um as you all know when julian with julian for the most part he was primarily breastfed i like i told you all before i did have to supplement towards the end and then in the beginning i gave him like two or three bottles like the first few weeks of his life and then he didn't have any more formula until like towards the end of my breastfeeding journey I say that all the time but Andre did make it a point to create moments for him to be able to feed Julian so that I wasn't constantly having to nurse um and I made sure that I pumped enough milk and kept our refrigerator stocked enough to make that situation possible for him. But he did make it a point to partici actively participate in feeding Julian. It wasn't a situation where he was just like, where well, you're breastfeeding, so it's on you. He did make it a point to actively want to be a part of Julian's feedings. Um, with that, I'll also put diapers. 
the least your significant other can do is change a diaper. I know some guys feel weird about changing baby's diapers. Like, they don't want to do it. But I'll be honest with you all. When Julian was first born, I was scared to change his diapers because he was a guy. <laughs> I don't know how to wipe guys. How hard to wipe. How Like, I... So... That was something I did lean on Andre for because I was freaking out in the beginning, especially because Julian had to get like a circumcision and stuff like that. So I was kind of terrified. But obviously, after the first few days or whatever, I got over that. It was just like nerve. But when Julian was small, Andre absolutely changed more diapers than I changed. Absolutely. He absolutely changed more diapers than I changed the first couple of months of Julian's life. No question about it. Um, so I think that goes hand in hand with the feedings because if you are feeding your baby properly, your baby's going to use it properly. So I do think those go hand in hand. Um, giving space is the third thing that I wrote down. And when I say that, I mean, your significant other, your partner, whatever should give you space to live in your new title. Like, I personally went from being single. I don't consider myself single even though I'm not married yet. So, pre-Andre, I was single. With Andre, will we common law? <laughs> but, you switch to mom just like that. You go into the hospital one person, and you come out of the hospital another person. And personally, I feel like that transition for me was a little bit different than that transition for Andre because his body didn't have to change. So I do think it's important for your significant other to give you space to get used to your new normal as opposed to putting all of the responsibilities with that child onto you. If, yes, I'm the food, but you can also provide food. Yes, I'm the mother but you're also the father like there has to be that time of you know what i got it go for a walk i got it go work out i got it go hang out with your sister whatever that case may be it shouldn't be a situation where he's like oh my baby's only two weeks old i can't run to the store right quick because he doesn't know what to do like if you feel like that about the person you have a child with that's a problem the next thing on my list is active support and when i say that i simply just mean exactly what it says um and i guess my next thing goes into that as well listening a lot of times people listen to give you their response they don't listen to understand what you're saying and if i'm telling you i don't feel great today if i'm telling you i'm not feeling being a parent today i shouldn't say that i'm not feeling like i can be a good parent today let me put it that way if I'm feeling depressed today, if I'm feeling like I don't look good today, whatever that case may be, it's your partner's job to support you in that and how that looks for your type of support. What is the type of support that you need? And that is how that person should be supporting you through that. It shouldn't be, oh my God, I feel so ugly today. And then their response is, Okay, well, what you want me to do about that? I'm clicking my pen on purpose. But I'm saying, like, it should be a situation where they're saying or doing whatever it is that they know that you... Because I'm assuming you know the person and they know you. They're, they should be doing or saying whatever it is that they know you need to make you feel good in that moment. It shouldn't be a situation where they're kind of lost in the sauce and don't know what's going on. Like, they should know what they need to be saying or what they need to be doing to make you feel good. Even if it's, oh, babe, you look beautiful. Or if they know that you like flowers, they go run to the store, run to the market or whatever to get you flowers real quick. Or if they, if you're, my sister, I have a sister who's really big on letting her significant other help her wash her hair. So even if it's something like that, for example, like whatever they feel like that intimate moment is for you to encourage you that's what they should be doing while at the same time listening to what you're saying don't just shut you down because they don't think like i still have not lost my baby weight 
if you look at my old videos from when I first came on this channel, when I was like a few weeks pregnant, compared to how my face looks now, you, it's clear. I have not lost my baby weight. Am I comfortable with how I look? No. Does Andre make me feel like I look great every day, even on bad days? Yes. Why? Because he understands that I know that I don't like the way I look. He listens to me when I say I don't like the way I look. He listened to me when I decided to get a gym membership again. And then the world went kaput. So now I can't go. But he actively listens to me and actively supports me. He actively gives me space. Even today, and Julian's 16 months old, he actively gives me space to be upset about me not looking like I want to look. Does he let me dwell in it? Not necessarily. Eventually, I have to come out of that funk. But he still gives me the space and opportunity to 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 tap, stick my toe in it. And to give me the feedback that I need him to give me. So that's it for that one. Um, next on my list, this is a real short list, y'all. But I have two more things. Possibly. Unless I think of something else. But next on my list is do things without being told to do so. I know some people who have baby daddies and they're like, do you want me to give him a bottle? Do you want me to change his diaper? Do you want me to give him a bath? Do you think he's tired? Do you... What do you think? The yellow line on his diaper is blue. What do you think he needs? Like, it shouldn't be a situation where your partner's asking you, what, what should I do? Especially if this is both of your guys' first child. You lost in this just like I'm lost in this. If I'm figuring it out, you can figure it out. It's not my job to figure it out for you. If I'm figuring this out, you need to be figuring it out. If you see, if he smells like he pooped, you need to be changing him. Don't come to me and ask me if he needs to be changed. That's not my job to answer that question for you. If he's throwing up, on, if he's throwing up all over himself, and his neck is full of throw up, her neck is full of throw up. Don't ask me if I think he needs a bath. What do you think? So that's all I mean by that. Like, it's, it's, it's self-explanatory. Like, you should be able to, to take care of your child without needing input from me. The last thing on my list, and this is also something that I felt was very, very beneficial to our new parenthood, is creating... Your partner should be able to create their own bond and schedule with the baby. It shouldn't be a situation where, and once again, Andre lived with me. We, we were, it wasn't a situation where we were in two separate spaces. So that would probably be different if you and your significant other or the person you have a child with do not live together. But Andre and I live together. Pregnant, pre-pregnant, post-pregnant, toddler, we've always been together. So, um, one thing that Andre did, and this was mostly, no, this happened, okay. I told y'all this in my last video when I talked about my feeding schedule or my pumping schedule. Andre, there's pretty much every day of the week, to be honest, Andre was the one up with Julian first thing in the morning. Because I was up with him late at night. Especially on the days Andre had class the next morning. If Andre had class the next morning and Julian was waking up at 2 a.m., I wasn't making Andre get up with me. But when Julian would wake back up at like 5, 6 o'clock in the morning, because Andre was getting up at that time anyways, because he had been asleep since like 10, 11 o'clock at night, I was able to sleep in during the mornings until he had to leave to go to work. Or until he had to leave to go to class. Or until he had to leave to do to do something. Obviously, I wasn't doing it after maternity leave. But anything that he had to do, if he didn't have to do, up until he had to do those things, he was up with Julian. So I think his early class was at like 8 o'clock in the morning, 8.30. We got like 8 and 9. That was a couple years ago now, so I can't think. We had Julian in 2019. That was last year. Jeez. He had to get up at like between like 8 and 9 a.m. That was, I'm sorry, his class was between like 8 or 9 a.m. I can't remember exactly what time it was. But up until like 45 minutes before he had to go to class, Andre would be up with Julian by himself every single morning, basically. And 
that gave them time to create those bonds. That gave them time to form their own schedule where it, it kind of was like Julian knew to be up because he was going to hang out in the living room with his dad. If that makes sense. Like Julian would be on his boppy. Sometimes he would be up drinking milk because Julian was holding his own bottle at like two months. So, or like, was it two months? It wasn't in March, April, May. He was holding his own bottle at like one month. <laughs> so, he would be up in his body chilling with Andre, drinking milk or watching TV or sleep, whatever the case may be. But he wasn't making noise after a certain point because he kind of was used to that being his schedule. And it gave me time to catch up on a few hours of sleep that I didn't get that night before being up at 2 o'clock in the morning with Julian. So that was all the tips that I had. I just wanted to, this is not really that much of a long video. Um... But I do think it's important because I know some people depend heavily, especially women, we do have a tendency to depend heavily on our blood family to help with our child more so than we do the person who helped make the child. And I'll be honest, like, there's nothing wrong with calling your mom. Like, if something was wrong with Julian and I didn't, I'm sorry, that's not a little automatic for brief rare if y'all just heard that. If I don't know what's wrong with Julian at, that, at any point and I need advice, I'll call my mom. We'll call Andre's mom. We'll text, like, that's a given because they have way more kids than we have. <laughs> They've done it before, so we do do stuff like that. But in the sense where it's like, I need a nap. How can I get a nap? Oh my God, let me call my mama. So I can drop my two-day-old baby off at her house because he's screaming and I need a nap. Even though his dad is sitting on the couch watching TV. His dad just left to go hang with his friends. What am I going to do? Call the dad. But that's basically it. I just wanted to do this video. First of all, let me point out, doing like what should I do when I'm pregnant type of videos are so much, or when I'm post-pregnancy type of videos are so much easier now that Julian's independent. Because I, it, it's so much clearer in my mind. I'm not as frazzled. Which is why I'm still making videos like this and Julian is 16 months old. They're easier today than they were when he was four months old and I was trying to do it. It was just a mess then because I was living too thick in it. But that's pretty much it for this video. If you are watching this video and you are expecting or you are a new mom, congratulations. If y'all like this, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll talk to y'all next time.